Hello and welcome to Pavli Connect. So in this video, we are going to have a look on API module by Pavli. So API module by Pavli is very powerful and very interesting tool of Pavli Connect using which you can connect apps and services which are not integrated with Pavli Connect as well in your automation workflow. So how it works and how you can use that to automate your task. Let's see. So here you can see that I have created a workflow and in this workflow, I have selected Pavli form builder in a trigger application and received some response. If I have done that, we will have a look on this a bit later. But first, let's scroll down, come to our action window in our workflow. And here guys, we just have to search for API by Pavli. Just select API. And after selecting API by Pavli, here it is giving us some options like action event, endpoint URL, authentication and all. Now here in this video to test this feature, we are going to take an example of our API endpoint and using this endpoint URL, this API endpoint, we just have to send the pin code of our address and then in response in return, we will get the address of the post office of that pin code. So this is what this API endpoint do. Now here guys, we just have to use this API endpoint and see how the API by Pavli actually works. Now after selecting API by Pavli, the first thing it asks us is the action event. So in the drop down below, we can see six different action event, get, post, custom request, put, delete and patch. So here while referring to the API endpoint of the service or the application which you want to connect, while referring to the API endpoint, you will also get the request type. So here before this API endpoint, it is written get. So this means we have to use the get action event, the get request method while making the API call to this particular endpoint. So you just have to refer to the API doc of the application of the service which you are connecting. So we are going to select the action event as get. Then after this, the next thing it asks us is the endpoint URL. That what is the URL on which we are going to make the call, the API calls. So here we can see this is the API endpoint or the URL we are going to use. So in this video, I'm just taking an example of this, of this website, of this service. But instead of this, you can basically follow the same process for any of your application and service. You just have to figure out that what action event you have to use, what endpoint URL you have to use. And after entering the endpoint URL, the next thing it asks us is the authentication. That this API call, this API endpoint requires some kind of authentication and not. So in this module by Pavli Connect, the API module, it offers basically three different types of authentication. First one is the no auth, that no authentication is required. The second one which you can use is basic auth. So in basic auth, you just have to enter the, or send the key value pair of the credentials for the authentication. And the third one which it offers is the bearer token, using which you just have to enter the bearer token or the API key of the application for the authentication method. Right now in this API endpoint, it does not require any kind of authentication. So I am selecting no auth. But if your applications or service required any kind of authentication, you can use these two. The authentication method of auth 1.0 and auth 2.0 are not supported in this module of Public Connect. So if your application or service use or requires auth 1.0 or 2.0 based authentication, you cannot do that using this module. After selecting the authentication, the next thing it asks us is to add headers. Now some of the applications may require to get some data in headers while getting this API call. So while making this API call, if you have to send some data in the headers, then you can use this feature. You just have to select it and here you can see the label and value that you have to pass in the header format. So basically you just have to refer to the API doc of the application or the service you are integrating and you will find out that if you have to send some header data or not. If you have to send, you just have to enter the label of the header over here and the value which it is asking in front of it over here. Now instead of this, by clicking on this plus button, you can add multiple headers as well, as much headers you want to add. So right now, this particular endpoint does not require any kind of headers in API call. So that's why we are not going to select this. If it requires, you just have to select it and enter the label and value of the headers over here. Now after this, the next thing it asks us is the set parameter. Now in this API endpoint, you will see there is a variable, there is a dynamic field. So in this API endpoint here, we also have to send the pin code that for what pin code we want to get the data of the post office. Now here, this pin code is going to change for each and every response. So let me take you to my trigger. Now here in our trigger application, I have selected Pavli form builder and I have also captured a response. So let's take a simple example. 
in the public form builder form i have created a form where i'm asking the user the first name last name and the pin code and whatever pin code they enter over here i want to get the address of the post office of that pin code so i have connected it with public connect using the webhook url and also captured the response and this is the response the first name last name and the pin code and i want to get the address of the post office for this particular pin code so basically this response is going to be a dynamic response this field is going to be a variable now to add these kind of variables in our endpoint url usually applications mention this variable in single curly braces but in pabli connect in this api by pabli module to enter these kind of variables we have to mention it in double curly braces so here guys whatever variables you have in the endpoint url you have to enter those variables in double curly braces and after creating these variables this query parameters we have to basically create the same parameter with the same name in the set parameters option just select it and here again you will get a pair of label and value so we have this variable of pin code just copy the exact same name same spelling over here and paste it over here in this label so here in label section while making this api endpoint what data we want to send over here that data we have to mention in this value section so we want to get the address of this pin code which we have received from pabli form builder so let's map this response of pin code over here in this field of value just click on this field and from the drop down select and map the response basically a lot of users face doubt that why they can't map the same exact same value in this api endpoint url so it does not take the query parameters directly by mapping over here so that is why we have created a variable by adding uh, the same text in double curly braces and then we have added the parameter over here we have created the label and value of that particular parameter over here so after this guys after entering the parameters as well just click on the save and send test request button now when we click on the save and send test request button here in response we will get address of all the post office which we have in this pin code so here in the drop down you can see a details of all the post office over here so in this way we have made an api call a api request on this endpoint and successfully received the response in our public connect workflow now you can use this api module by pabli this feature of pabli connect in your automation workflow enter the endpoint url add the headers and authentication if required and then set the parameters and get the response and automate your workflows now after this a lot of user also ask us a doubt that some of the api endpoints required some custom json body so how they can use this api module by pabli in that case now to send some data in the custom json body here an action event from the drop down we had a action event named as custom request you just have to select this action event and after this you have to select the method of your api call enter the endpoint url authentication and headers and instead of parameters here you will get a field to create a custom json body so if your applications or service required some kind of custom json body in the request api request using this feature using this method this action event you can use that as well and after this guys here in this data section we can enter the json body for example let's enter a json body for the same api request which we are sending so we have a query parameter named as pin code over here so we have to send the pin code so let's enter it and then in front of it we have to mention the value for the same so here from public form builder responses from the drop down we can select and map the same value over here as well so in this way you can basically map the data in this json body as well and you can create any kind of json body of your choice or whatever your application requires for this api call this api request now, and guys one more important thing if you have any kind of doubts or queries you can actually contact the team of the application or the service which you are trying to connect using this api module or you can refer to the api doc of the application or service as well now after this a lot of users also want to send some data to a webhook url using this same feature now to do so in action event here you have an action event of post using this action event you can actually send some data using this module to a webhook url so let's see how it is done now here in action event we have selected post and in endpoint url you have to paste the webhook url on which you want to send the data so i have received a webhook url from this webhook dot site let's copy this webhook url from here go to public connect and paste it over here just paste it after this it is asking us payload type so in the drop down below we have a list of different types of payloads using which we can send the data 
and also if you want to wrap the text in array or not you have an option for that too so if you want you can change it according to your choice now guys after this the rest of the thing stays the same if it requires if your web book or application or service requires authentication from the drop down you can select the authentication if not you can select no auth if you want to send some kind of headers the data some kind of data in headers you can select it and send the data for example let me send a random data for example named as api and then i'm just entering some random value over here and also you can create the parameters as well as we have done in the previous part so here let's add up two more parameters for example i'll just click here and create a parameter name as first name and then from this pavli form builder response select the response of first name and map it in the value and let's create another one as last name we have created the parameter last name and here in value from the drop down map the response so in this way you can basically configure what kind of data you want to send what is the data in you want to send in set parameters do you want to send some kind of headers in response or not and what is the authentication type and also the payload type as well now after configuring all of these details after setting up all of these details what we have to do we just have to click on this save and send test request button now when we click on this save and send test request button we will see if we have received some response so let's check the webhook url this webhook url that whether we have received some data in this way on this webhook url or not we will go to webhook.site and yes guys here you can see that on that same webhook url we have received some response we have the response of pin code first name and the last name the same data which we have created which you have added in this set parameters we can see the same data over here as well and also we have sent the data in headers as well we have sent a header named as api and this was the value and here you can see that the same response has been received so guys in this video we have learned how you can use this api by pavli module to connect your apps and services which are not integrated with pavli connect and use those services as well in your automation workflows so if you have any kind of doubts or queries you can write us in the comment box below and also come to us on forum.pavli.com so guys this is it for today's video thank you have a great day